Hey everyone, Sari here, and welcome back to another week of Flight Season Offense matches. This video got pushed back a bit further than I wanted it to be. I'm sorry that happened, and it's likely to happen again over the coming month. I do have a Discord server that I post updates on if you'd like to stay in the loop. There's a link in the description. This week saw the return of Guinevere and Zelkius to the offense matches. It's been a while since these two got to team up, and they've gotten some updates since then. Guinevere's gotten another set of dragonflowers to bring her to the new cap, and Zelki has gotten ascended floret to bolster his speed. I also decided to stick with the close defense and bonfire skill set for Zelkius this week. Cancelling enemy bonuses really helps him shrug off bonus week notes and spray brave Erica's, and bonfire fits in nicely with the extra defense. As usual, I gave them two team slots. One of them lets Guinevere use null follow up, while the other has her using null see disrupt instead. Having the option to use either skill was really helpful and came in handy throughout the week. I also switched out Dogger for Ular. The extra speed she offers is extremely valuable to both Guinevere and Zalgius, and Guinevere still has more than enough res to shrug off enemy mages. I also got to debut a fun Gale Force idea that I've been thinking about since Legendary Hector got his refine. This remix, Dostian Pulse, makes enabling Gale Forces a much easier job than usual by reducing it to a full charge special for his entire team assuming you've built the team correctly. He can also carry armor march as his seal, letting legendary Edelgard have access to her usual mobility while also running double savage blow. Bolt Fighter gives Hector a very consistent kill force, and death blow is a cheap, simple option to help him hit a bit harder. Edelgard, as usual, is a kill force queen thanks to Raging Storm. While she's been outshone a lot lately by her fallen version, the legendary flavor can still do a plenty of work. Amor works very nicely with Heavy Blade, giving her a near-guaranteed 5 true damage and a bonus cooldown charge on every swing. Savage Blow helps ensure that no target stays outside of her ability to one-shot them, and Raging Storm's guaranteed follow-up against beasts and dragons is surprisingly relevant against a number of common threats. Dogger also got to use a Gale Force build for this team. Hector's Pulse means that she only really needs Flashing Blade to have a consistent Gale Force, thanks to her personal null follow-up, and she manages pretty well even with non-optimal IVs, though mine does need to be careful with enemy counterattacks. Peony's attack and speed tactics work really nicely with Ostean Pulse too, offering everyone in range a full spectrum of visible buffs. This team could definitely use some optimization, I don't think it's at its best right now, since the double savage blows can actually interfere with Dogger and Hector getting their Gale Forces and I'd really like to get a sabotage defense for this team as well. Now that we've gone over the teams, let's get to the first match. This match is going to be a really fun way to start off the week. They've got a 6 unit defense team, which isn't too common to see these days. Featuring 3 mythics, which is also a pretty rare combination giving their three non-mythic units some pretty hefty stat bonuses. Niffle on the front line can be really annoying for enemy melee units to handle, and legendary Lelina in season is always a threat to just about anything. Backing it all up with a brave Veronica gives their team a lot of stat swings that you might not be expect if you're not planning ahead, thanks to her weapon and the close guard and just the combat bonuses and debuffs she can apply if she attacks. This match is going to be a fun way to debut the <laughs> Gale Force squad I set up, and I wasn't really planning to take too many swings with it, but we'll see how the week goes. I'm going yes. to take this first turn just to test some traps. Oh, that is the real trap. I made sure we were keeping our combat units out of the way. And Bremmond himself, I'm not too worried about taking this damage, since the healing tower should take him out of range of being healed by Veronica before she has a chance to actually heal him. Good morning. Then we can move air. And since we did actually find the real bolt trap there, we don't have to worry about testing this one. So That's air can just nice. move down here next to Peony. Like we'll this. move down a tile, Got and everyone else is going to move over. Time to go. Let's get moving. First turn gets locked out, and Brian will be back to full health for the next turn. 
From here, we'll just have Doc remove Invert this tile and let Peony dance her to move into Peony's former position. And then Edelgard and Hector will just step over one tile each and we'll end the turn. At this point, I actually had to double check some of my math since I didn't realize their fort was missing their bonus structure at the start. But we should still be able to make this out work out. I'm going to so. start by repositioning Hector forward. Even if this is a real crafty trap and it does affect Dogger, it's not going to bother us here. Yes. And then flip Edelgard forward as well. Your Edelgard plan. is going to march on forward and one-shot this Brandman for us. And then Hector is going to march in and not one-shot Niffle, which lets him get his Gale Force. <laughs> Niffle's counterattack doesn't really mean too much here, since we're not planning to let them counterattack us at all. From there, Edelgard can move up and one-shot Veronica as well. Then Ready. we're going to let Peony dance Dogger and give both Dogger and Hector an orders buff, Let's get which lets Hector move up and start trapping Friandra. Time to go. Edelgard then gets to move over and one-shot Alina, much to huh. Hector's dismay. And I actually blessing. ended up goofing my planning a bit on this. I was going to have Dogger jump over and Gale Force through Hell, but since Edelgard didn't get to Savage Blue Hell twice, Dogger can't quite finish Hell off here. Brad so instead, we're just going to have her break this tactic room and make it easier for us to navigate this next turn. It's still okay, since Triandra can't actually get anything done here, and... Neither can help, really. And Edelgard does a very good job of dropping her health low enough for Dogger so. to go in and await. Oh, we are going to need to let Edelgard tank this Luna, since Dogger doesn't quite have enough health to live through that. I am death itself. And while Edelgard can't ever kill a Mystic Boost Hill on her own, she doesn't so. have to. She has friends. <laughs> and Dogger finally gets to do her own Gale Force, and also take the first combat I think I've given her in a very long time. And from here we can just clean things up by having Dogger pick up one pot, it will be and we'll done. smite Peony forward, Good let her morning. pick up a second pot, Your and we'll plan. let Card close out the match. That was a fun way to start the week. Didn't quite go as well as I was planning, but it, it's not too often that I use Gale Force teams like this. Let's see what we get next. This match is going to be another fun outing for the Gale Force squad. They've got a pretty solid array of units with a plus 10 Eldigan headlining their team. This Sudden Panic's a really cool extra skill to give him, and can really mess with people's formations if they're not careful, since, well, getting panicked for staying near an ally can make it hard to set up and actually initiate on this team. Or even just tank it, depending on the formation. They're also helping to protect their front line with the Sniffle for Domain of Ice, and a Farsave Fate who's got Dragon Wall and is very, very bulky. Niffle's also very useful for just being a melee flash effect, which can be very annoying for a lot of save balls or other tanks. And a bonus weak note's always a bit of a menace, as is this Volanatal Guard that they have in the corner to make sure she transforms and 
giving her gale force can really make her hard to contain if you're not very careful. And they're rounding their team out with a duo leaf, who's a bit of a rally trap along with Faye's harsh command, and the Triandra with guidance to help Faye get around. This match is going to be a really interesting execution, assuming that I've figured this out correctly, and is going to involve a lot of shenanigans with setting up and then actually pulling this off. We're going to start just by opening things up a bit, and Air is going to break this for us before Pian uses Pathfinder to dance Air. Who's then going to move over here and enable Order's buffs for both Edelgard and Hector, while Dogger uses those same Order buffs to move over here next to Peony. Let's get then moving. move Hector over here Your and plan. Edelgard over here. We're all out of range here, so we don't have to worry about their turn one. And even though Dogger is Got getting em. panicked, that doesn't matter since her skin Foxy just flips all of those right back into their normal bonuses. From here, so. we're going to flip Hector forward with Dogger and I smite Edelgard forward with Mila, and Ready. then dance Dogger. Your plan. And then from here, we're going to hope that I've figured out this attack arrangement correctly. We're going to start by letting Edelgard dismantle Eldigan. He gets an impressive amount of damage reduction on the first hit, but it's just not enough to keep him alive, with Hadelgard hitting so hard. And the Savage Blow isn't quite right, enough to let Dogger one-shot no, thanks to, again, the Domain of Ice from Niffle. Which means that Dogger is going to get to Gale Force from this combat. From there, the Order's buff, and well, Pathfinder as well, let Hector move up and take down Niffle, and once again, Domain of Ice lets us get a second hit in. Which secures Hector's Gale Force. And then we can use well, both Pathfinder and Guidance again to let Edelgard move over and use her own Gale Force to one shot Triantra. Then, Dogger's going to get to move in and just take a shot at Leaf because we may as well. We're not finishing him off here and he's not going to be able to move anywhere with Dogger keeping him in place. And Edelgard can move over one more tile to knock out their fate. And stop her from potentially giving Dogger any problems. Which and we'll finish mine? things off by flipping he Edelgard down out of the way. While she could handle this fallen Edelgard, she wouldn't be able to stop Edelgard from gale forcing around the map, and I'd rather avoid that here. And this also means that Edelgard gets to march again for next turn. Yes. Then we'll just let Air open up this owl statue and say go. <laughs> Nothing happens except that Edelgard marches forward. Let's get moving. From there, we're just going to have Hector move out of the way and open the way towards these ether pots so that we can pick them up before we even end the match. Time to go. Then we're going to let Edelgard fight herself until the legendary version eventually comes out on top. We'll take some damage from this, a little more than needed because like I this. actually forgot to move Mila up one tile and enable Your those plan. buffs, but that's okay. It would have taken at least two rounds to finish her off anyway. Good and we'll just let Peony dance Edelgard and continue enabling go. our armor march. May as well move here and test the trap. It's real. I kind of forgot to remember whether or not we found the real one last time. That's okay. And, well, with Dogger continuing to 
keep Leaf from accomplishing anything. It gives us an easy time of picking these pots up Which this turn. Death's caress. Before flipping so. Edelgard forward. Understood. And letting her close out the match. That was a really fun one to plan out. Let's see what we get next. This match is going to be a fun one just for finally being able to return to Guinevere and Selkius. Selkius is using a bit of a different build this time around, but it should still be great. They have a pretty neat team here, including a Brave Erica and a Harmonic Leaf being guarded by a far save Hector and a near save Edelgard. It makes it pretty hard to engage onto this team, and well, tanking Erica is always a bit of a risk, especially when she has a pre-charged Moonbow. And the bonus weak note gives both of the cavalry a lot more reach on the left side of the map than you might expect at first. Bramman's a bit of a dense trap with this Triandra, who can jump forward and dense him and potentially activate the map, though they wouldn't have a whole lot more reach than they already do from this point. I don't think I'm going to have too many problems with this, we should be able to clean things up pretty easily. Although I will be making sure that we disable this Erika's Mimbo before having Zalkius tank her. It will be done. We're going to let Uller break this throne, then Peony can aerobatics past her and dance. It will be Null is going to move up and break this structure while Zalkius moves past Uller, thanks to aerobatics. Very well. Uller's going to move up here and break this wall. The glimmer of then we're going to have air float to Guinevere. Are you let her move up here next to Uller and get her spectrum of buffs for next turn. Their turn gets locked out here, and I'll then we're going alive. to have Zelgia's swap ruler. Let Milla like flip this. him forward. What is it? Then have Uller smite Guinevere forward. Good morning. Then dance Uller. It will be and done. Have her smite Peony as well. We Before we have Guinevere this. step forward and actually one-shot this bonus weak note. Huh. Then yes. we'll just have air move in here beside Ulur and tank things out in the enemy phase. I'm pretty sure Erica moves in to attack first, she does the most damage on her team. No draw, no escape. But Zelkius has a little bit too much speed for her, and is able to knock her out pretty cleanly. While Erica's menace actually really, really helps us here, since Quinnifer gets a huge boost to her attack and speed, letting her one-shot the leaf twice. Bramman can only do 7 damage to her, so he never gets to break through her healing. And all this is really doing is letting Guinevere heal Zelkius. Edelgard moves next, gets danced since we didn't bother isolating Triandra. And well, Say your prayers. this is not a fight that she's going to want to take. Hector swaps. Aid. Well. Triandra, safety. But it's not going to matter too much. What's so from here, it should be pretty easy to clean things up. We're just Ready. going to let Zelkius open up the way to these pots, dance him, then let Guinevere this. pick up this first pot, and Your have Zelkius jump over here to protect her from Hector and secure the second pot. And then we'll just say go. We don't have to worry about Hector's weapon with Zelkius being injured. Even the post-combat healing from Guinevere isn't going to actually bring him out of range of that. And, well, as much as Triandra is trying, she can't really threaten Guinevere here. 
and then Hector moves in, and Sulkius is going to clobber him with a bonfire. Say your prayers. It's a nice clean finish. Let's see what we get next. This match is going to be another fun outing for Quinn and Selkis, featuring some really impressive units on their defense, including this nearly maxed out Kempf. He's got a very defensive build with this ARD skill and the combination of Escutchen and Deflect Melee, giving him a very high amount of damage reduction on that second counterattack. Lunge is a nice way to help drag any non-safe strategies out of position too, and his Venom Edge is a really great way to mess with any melee opponents, especially when combined with Lara Shawl, who can apply a flash effect for free to the closest enemy within range. It doesn't quite sync up with her attack range, thanks to note, but it's still enough to be pretty threatening. You also have this very solid far save Raphael, who's a great alternative to Winter Felix, and being colorless can really help him a lot against some green mages. And they've also got this very highly merged Dancer Reinhardt. Most of the time the Reinhardt sees here blue, but this one's a very capable green threat with steady, sturdy impact and of rain and death blow on top. And they're rounding the whole thing out with a duo leaf. Whose rally is probably the most annoying part of this setup for me. A bonus weak note, and a Triandra. Who's also sporting res tactic and a wind sweep. Res tactic does a lot of work for beefing up Raphael and well also note and leaf and Larshal. And the, the Wind Sweep is a fun way to give her a fighting chance against enemy Brave Hectors, for example. I don't think I'm going to have too many issues with this, assuming I've planned it out correctly, and <laughs> there is a chance I have. But it will be I'm pretty sure this should go alright. We're going to just start by opening things up a little Very bit. Well. Guinevere and Uller can tag team their way Maybe to clearing out this corner of what the map. It? And then we'll leave Selgeus in beside Uller to make sure they both get a full set of buffs for next turn. Like this. Uller is going to isolate Leaf, yes. and we'll have Air break a Stark Shrine on her way to this Aether Pot in the back. Nothing happens the first turn thanks to the safety fence, and that also lets us dodge this odd recovery, so we don't have to worry about it here. Very From well. here, we're going to do a couple of movement shenanigans to get into position. Smiting Are Guinevere forward makes sure we get her a full spectrum of buffs for this turn. And then we'll swap Selgius with Uller to give him a set of buffs as well. Good have Peony move forward and dance Uller. Which lets Mola go over Selgius and flip him into position to keep Guinevere safe from the melee. That's and from there, gross. we're just going to let Air break this fire school. And Uller's going to stay put what is it? and watch the show. Gwen's null sea disrupt means we don't have to worry much about Lara Shawl. And, as expected, Kemp moves in to take the first swing at Selkius. Unfortunately for him, Selkius only needs one hit to finish him off. And while the flash effect does mean Note gets to attack him for free, she can't really do much to him. Meanwhile, everybody else is forced to attack Guinevere, thanks to a combination of enough damage to beat that 5 damage rule, and the isolation that we applied to Leaf. And Guinevere is not really going to have any problems punching through all of this. Tringer and Raphael can both do some damage, but it's not enough to really threaten her. And once she gets through them to Leaf and Lara Shawl, She's not really going to have anything to worry about. And in fact, all she does is undo all of Kempf's efforts. Healing Selkius and Peony back to full health, along with herself on the long way. Well, she's not quite going to heal to full health here, since Leaf's Fatal Smoke shuts that down. 
the air is going to top her off anyway. At the start of the next turn. The first turn went really well, and honestly, this was just tricky to plan out afterwards because we do want to reach both ether pods without finishing the match first. Thankfully, as scary as this Reinhardt is, he is actually tankable this turn, especially thanks to Air's bonus week, giving her a lot of extra bulk to work with. While he will do a chunk of extra damage when he attacks, he still wouldn't be able to finish her off. Are you so, sure? we're just going to let Guinevere move in and take down Note. Huh. Note does get to counterattack here, huh? but... That's not enough to finish Gwyn off, and she had a miracle charged up anyway. From there, we'll Ready. dance Guinevere, which gives buffs to everyone on our team, including Miller, which is blessing. important since she should be the one who ends up tanking Reinhardt here. And Very Guinevere, well. who can now get out of the way and open the way to this pot for next turn. What's your plan? Especially with Selkius swapping Uller Very well. to move forward and get ready to pick it up. Uller also gets to buff this tile yes. and let Air move in and pick up the Seether prop for us. Oh, he did go after Air. Probably because he could do more damage to her than to Mila. Which is fine. It will and be done. There, it's a pretty easy march forward to pick up second ether pot. Are you certain? Dance Guinevere. Good morning. I'll keep we'll just let Zelgia swap her, so we have all of her buffs online, and she can melt Reinhardt. Huh. This is satisfying clear. It's always fun to break apart a solid team like that. Let's see what we get next. This match is going to be a fun clear, mostly for the opportunity to beat down a legendary secret who's out of season this week. I always find this a little rude. He's a he's a very oppressive unit with the quickened pulse to enable his holy night aura for free. This one's actually using Pass to make him even harder to wall out. And combined with Note, he gets a 5 movement range at the start of every turn, unless you bring something like Stallploy along. They've also backed him up with a variety of other cavalry units, including a Zeke, who's actually very rarely seen. I don't see him very often at all. And a Veronica with her refine and then an actually in season legendary Lolina, who's got wind sweep to help her break through any safe ball nonsense. And then they're rounding the team out with a bonus week note, a Sothis, and a Triandra as their three mythics to boost up stats and try to make things a little harder to deal with. I don't think I'm really going to have problems with this, we're just going to take a turn to set things up and let Silgius and Guinevere tank their way through it. If anything, the tricky part is just going to be securing the pots after we're done. The I'm going to start this first turn by testing these first two traps, which are both real. That helps a lot for navigating the next mm, turns. Maybe this way. Then we'll dance air, and that lets us get past this gravity effect what by giving Uller an orders buff. She can jump down here and break a cake. It will be done. That position lets Mila jump down here and isolate Triandra for next turn. Very well. We'll move Guinevere over here yes. and have Air break this anniversary tree. And then we'll say go. While Peony is in range of Secret here, we are still in range of our safety fence, so their turn ends immediately anyway. I actually ended up missing the fact that Guinevere and Zelgius we are tied on their attack and speed stats currently, which means they're both soaking this bright shrine. Gives me a bit more incentive to give Guinevere an ascension floor at some point, but What's for now plan? it should still be okay. 
We're going to swap Celgius with Uber and complete his buff spectrum. What is it? She can break this heart garland. Ready. And we'll dance her to give Guinevere some extra buffs. Are you certain? And then she'll move up here. And from here we can just end turn and watch the fireworks. I'm not entirely sure who's going to attack first, but I think, yep, it's Veronica, since her weapon actually gives her a bit of priority over other attackers. But it's not really going to add too much to their team. Zeke moves in next. He can get a little bit of damage done, but... Let's see how you handle this. Tanking two bonfires in a row is... No draw, no escape. Not going to end too well for him. Secret moves next. Withdraw your blade. And all this Holy Night Aura is really going this. to do is make sure that Lolina and Sothis also both get to attack us this turn. And Triandra too. Triandra can do a little bit of damage to Guinevere, but it's not enough to really threaten her. Molina moves next, can do some damage with her pre-combat, but absolutely nothing in combat. And in the end, while Gwyn does end up sustaining some damage, she gets to heal Zelkis back to full health here just in time to watch Sothis reposition note to safety. Actually, forgot that I had replanned this a little bit, and Sothis wasn't quite able to reach us this past turn, but that's actually a good thing, since she's a lot easier for us to handle and stall out the match with than note would be. And we can actually make sure Zelgius takes note out right here. We're going to start by smiting Zelgius. And then I'll moving into position. Good morning. And then we'll dance Ulu. Like this. Have Mila flip air forward, and That's she can correct. break this tactic room. And from here, she'll be able to bait note while Zelkios can just save her. And Are while I could actually let one of your move here and bait Sothis out, I'd like to see if we can't force her to move onto this tile next to the Panic Banner instead by having her chase air. It will be so done. we'll just move Ulur up here, Very let well. break this healing tower, and say go. Oh no. Oh, well that's unfortunate. <laughs> I didn't expect Sothis to attack first. I for managed to forget about no Pathfinder. Draw, no escape. And that means we're actually not going to reach either of these ether pots this match. That's very unfortunate. Say your prayers. Selgius doesn't have any problems cleaning things up, but that does mean that we miss two ether pots and need to make sure that we do things properly for the rest of the week. This match should be another interesting one to navigate. They brought three dancers along on their team, including Neldigan, who's hard to isolate, with Triandra behind him, which makes putting two dancers in one column like this a lot less risky than it usually would be. Then they've also gotten Olm as a very significant melee threat with this little speed tough and his refine. A Fjorm to act as their far save unit. A Note as their seventh slot enabler and major debuffer between the chill speed and the menace on top, and an Ophelia to act as a ranged threat for their team, with a rally up trap and well, her precharged special. The DOP in here is another pretty significant threat just for how much attack she can provide to her team, and overall I think this is a solid little setup. I don't think it should give me too many problems, or I'm hoping it won't, since we do need to make sure that we're getting both ether pods for the rest of the week. Very well. We're going to start by opening things up a little bit. Gwen can open the statue. It will be done. And then we'll have Uller break a couple of Ready. things for us. What is it? Your and the orders buff lets Sylvia swap Peony down. 
Finally, let light. air into my lungs. Take over. We're out of range, even after all. Boosts himself by another extra movement, so they don't get to do anything on this first turn. And isolating Peony and Fjorm here is a, an important part of this. Very and here, well. it should be easy enough to get into position with a couple of movement antics. Miller smites Guinevere forward to give her a full spectrum of buffs, Want and Selkius is going to swap Uller for his set of buffs. Good morning. Peony can then dance Uller from here, enabling orders for Air, yes. who can flip Selkius into position to protect Guinevere. It will then we'll be move Uller over one space and let Uller move done. over as well, and say go. From here, since we managed to get Guinevere to soak this chill res, she should actually end up tanking both dancers, other than Elpigan, who attacks here first since he's the only one who survives the combat. And since both Triandra and Peony can do damage to Guinevere, they're going to attack in here before Note attacks into Selgius. Which means that all never gets danced. And we take out most of the threat on our team before anything else can happen. Huh. Isolating Peony and Fjorm also means that Ophelia never gets to rally. Which really just helps make sure that we don't have to worry about any extra damage or unexpected Say movement. Bonus week note, just getting beaten down by Zelgius is kind of fun to see. The last turn went pretty well, but we do still have a couple of threats to be concerned by, especially since Ophelia still has a small chance that she might rally from this side of Alm, and then get danced by Eldigan and potentially reach Zelgius. Which, while I think he could handle it, it wouldn't be good to try and tank that and Alm in the same turn. So instead, what I'll we're going to do alive. is just move Selvius over one tile, move mm, Peony next to him, this way. and try to dance, because may as well. It's fine. We didn't need this trap to be real or fake for this to work. Are you certain? Guinevere is actually going to move onto this defense tile and then attack Fjorm, which nearly finishes Fjorm off. And the reason this is safe is because Pulse Smoke disabled her special in the previous turn. We're not too worried about the damage Gwyn is taking here, since Ophelia can never actually do damage to Guinevere. Especially when she doesn't have a special. And then Uller's well. just going to smite Zelgius into position. To continue walling their team off. That's then we'll just move Air over to start getting into position for the Aether Pot on the side. And we'll say go. Eldigan getting topped off here guarantees that we'll never have to worry about ending the match before we're ready to. No draw, no escape. And he's also never going to accomplish anything against Selkius. Yeah! Neither is Fjorm. Even after no draw, getting no topped off by the healing tower, she just can't survive this counter. And Alm, while he can do damage thanks ah! to his send scale, no draw, no escape. doesn't secure the sweep and, well, Zalkius can finish him off pretty easily from there. The and with the most of the match handled at this point, we just want to make sure we do pick up both pots before we close things out. Yes. Air's going to secure this one for us. We must end Guinevere this. can finish off Ophelia before she causes trouble. Very well. Uller can pick up the second pot for us. It will be done. And we'll just let Noah move in next to Selkius, who's going to continue saving everybody from Eldegun one more turn. He should just stay in place here. Hm. Yep. One will live, one will die. But we'll probably let Guinevere handle this one. Eldegun's pretty hard to knock out with a physical yeah, yeah. unit, especially a red one when he's on a defense tile, but his res is nowhere near as impressive, and Guinevere can punch through that and finish him off. Yeah. 
Let's look at the match. Let's see what we get next. This is going to be another fun match near the end of the week. They've got a very highly invested Claude as one of their highlights. I don't see this very much on a defense team, but he's very hard to handle if you're not careful, since, well, with an ascended speed stat and attack stat, and all of the attack speed bonuses he gets from his skills, he's very hard to actually double without relying on an auto follow-up effect, and he has no follow-up from his weapon, so you can't do that either. They're backing this up with some other in-season legendaries, including a bonus week Tiki, and a legendary Fey, who I haven't actually had to fight at all yet in Aether Raids. The combination of her weapon and precharged miracle is very obnoxious for trying to finish her off in one combat, and can really help enable a lot of follow-up nonsense from Triandra's Dance or Wings of Mercy from Lynn in case she's actually low. This Lynn especially is very mobile thanks to both Wings of Mercy and the Air Orders from Triandra, which also helps Claude to reach this tile in front of Faye and potentially catch people off guard. And of course, Hell with her Mystic Boost set is always a bit of a pain to knock out for a lot of units. I'm going to need to take some time to set this one up, since we do want to test these traps, and getting into position after will take another couple of turns. But it shouldn't be too hard to handle. I'm going to start by just letting Guinevere break this, which lets air move up and break this statue. And since that wasn't the real trap, we really do want to make sure that we test this one. And then we'll have Solgius break another thingy. It will be done. The lure moves over, and we're just going to have Mila stay put over here, since we're going to make sure Shirantra stays isolated and doesn't get to dance Fae. And we're out of range here, so they don't really get to do anything. And from here, we're just going to open things up a little bit more. Breaking this catapult means that we'll always be able to let Zelgius knock Hell out once we're Good ready morning. to start this fight. Peony is going to go ahead and break this lamp. We must we'll flip this. air down and out of the threat range. What is it? Then move Ulur and Zelgius up, plan? and end the turn again. Then done. we'll just spend one more turn rearranging our formations. Then we'll swap Ruler down. Then we'll move Peony into position here. We are actually going to end up taking this Bolt Tower hit on Zalgius. I forgot to make sure we broke that, but well. he should still be okay here. Yes. Then we'll move Air down to reposition Mila for next turn. There goes the Bolt Tower can help patch that up, and he won't be too hurt for this next turn. It will be done. Here, we're going to get things started, finally, by smiting Guinevere forward. Are you certain? And then moving her here. She can break this hindrance, not that it really matters for us. We'll let Zelgius wait in place and get Maybe danced into position, way. so he at least gets a I'll few extra buffs. The glimmer of then we'll flip Nilla over, like this. and move her up to be in range for more buffs. From here, yep, Faye moves in first. And she can do a little bit of damage since we didn't get those extra points of res for Zelgius. And Zelgius isn't going to be able to finish her off here, thanks to the miracle. But that's still okay. Claude moves in next, but he shouldn't actually be able to get much done here since Guinevere outspeeds him, and even with 80% damage reduction, he still takes some damage from that first hit. And Lin moves in next, and can also do some damage, your thanks to the Moonbow. 
but it's still not enough to actually threaten Guinevere, and, or even push her below half health. Then she just gets to continue happily healing Zalgius. Triantra doesn't do anything at all. The defense tile is a little bit too much for her to punch through Guinevere's res. And down she goes. Hell moves in last, since, well, Zalgius can knock her out. She doesn't have a guard effect to mess with him. Although, that new guard, or flow guard, might be something she'd be interested in. What is then it? from here it should be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to smite Zalgius for a full set of attack and rest buffs, which should help him dealing with these dragons. Good morning. Then we'll dance him, and it's just ends turn. Without her miracle charged, it shouldn't really be too hard for Selkius to handle Faye, although Tiki might be a little too bulky to one round. Say your prayers. Yep, by just a few hit points. Those bonus weak stats do a lot of work for her. Faye, though, is not going to be quite so lucky. Say your prayers. And down she goes. Very well. And we'll just let Gwyn finish Tiki off, and top off Selkius' health before the end of the match. That was a fun one. On to the next one. This match is going to be another fun one at the end of the week, featuring some familiar faces in terms of red threats. Dew Leaf is honestly still really strong, even without merges and a mostly base kit, and Brave Alms Refine has made him very hard to tank. Axebreaker's a fun budget idea for him, and can really help him punch through some of the Brave Edelgard shaped savior tanks, and Phantom Speed really helps offset his speed flaw, and make it a lot harder for him to miss this speed check. They've also got a Brave Camilla on their team, who also has her recent refine. The start of turn debuffs and gravity effect can really mess with an enemy team, along with just the dazzling effect and the double savage blows, and she gets a very solid amount of extra attack and speed when she initiates from just her base kit. They've also got a <laughs> Dancer Nephany on their team too, who's not a unit I see very much. The speed and res tactics don't actually affect Camilla here, since they have three flyers on their team, but they do boost Leaf and Note, and can give them a bit more s speed and res than an opponent might be expecting if they're not paying attention. Having Blade Session on Note for her bonus week makes her a pretty credible threat, too. And of course, Hell with Mystic Boost. The Vengeance is a fun touch for her. I I don't really know if it does more damage more consistently than something like Luna would, especially against bulky targets, but I could see it catching people off guard against mid to low defenses. And of course a Triandra hanging out in the back has another dancer option, with a very annoying chill attack that's going to be tanked by Zelkius. I don't expect Gwyn and Selkius to have too many problems here, mostly thanks to the Nulsi Disrupt on Guinevere. And we should be able to make it through this without too many issues. I'm going to just rely on our safety fence for this first turn. We'll move Camilla down and make sure that she continues isolating Camilla and Death's caress. I guess note two for the next turn. Are you certain? It's mostly about making sure Camilla doesn't restore anybody. And then we'll wait a turn. From here, well. we're just going to smite Guinevere and complete her buff spectrum. We must she'll move this. over one space. Selkius is going to swap Peony, and then she'll dance him for a few extra buffs, and let him move into position to 
safeguard Guinevere from Note and Alm. Yes. Then we'll move Air back over here. I actually goofed a bit with my opening positioning. I meant to have Gw her break this tactic room on the first turn. But we should still be fine. From here, Triantra's going to dance Hell to start things off, and then Alm attacks into Selkius. It's actually pretty impressively bulky, but it's not enough to save him here. Note comes in next, and can do a little bit of damage thanks to that blade session. But a lot like Golem, it's just not enough. And from here, Gwen should just start topping up his health. Leaf can't really get anything done. He's uh, not having a good time against a high-res blue mage. And well, Knoa's got about the same problem here. Then Hell moves in and is, stays just out of range of being danced into Zalgius. From here, we should be able to just hold our positions, really, and I'll keep you alive. let Hell and Nephany attack into plan? us. It will be done. We'll just make sure Ulur is in range done. to smite Guinevere Very next well. turn to make sure we reach Triandra, and we'll count on Peony to reach the other pot. Nephany moves in first. She can do a little bit of damage with her Brave Bow, but that's not going to even out-heal Guinevere's weapon. Or out-damage Guinevere's weapon in the post-combat healing. And as usual, Selkis doesn't have many problems handling Say health. Your prayers. I really do think that Flow Guard is going to be a great option for Hell, though. It just makes it harder for people to one-shot her on the first counter-attack and make it a lot easier to get that survival. Yes. And from here, we can just fly on forward, Good morning. pick up both ether pots, what is it? and smite Guinevere onto a potentially real gravity trap. That's fake. We must end this. That's fine. And she'll just one-shot Triandra and close out the match. That was a fun one. This match is going to be a fun rematch at the end of the week, featuring some units I haven't seen on defenses yet, and some that are pretty rare, including this maxed out Silk, who's really impressive. Her bulk is just very spooky to try and handle, even with a Nulsi Disrupt user. And Melancholy is a very effective guard staff that you don't see very often on a defense. They're also fielding the recently released Ascended Legarn, who should actually be able to speed tie Guinevere here, and honestly, I'm very impressed by that. They've also got this bonus week to a Corin as an extra ranged threat. And this extremely impressive Masked Marth. The combination of Sealed Falchion and Sturdy Impact lets her shut down almost any second counterattack, and even if someone has no follow up to break through those, there's a deflect melee to help ensure the sur her survival. Close Call and Odd Tempest can give her a lot of unexpected movement as well. And they're capping their team out with a Dancer Burkut with Shield Pulse and Miracle. It doesn't fully charge Miracle without help, so I'm not sure how effective it is here, but it does make it a little bit harder to actually break through him. And of course, the bonus weak note. And a Harmonic Dorothea as their duo Dancer, and a way to always enable Lakeirn's weapon even if she gets panicked or any other shenanigans happen, as long as Dorothy is alive to buff her, this weapon comes online. This is going to be a fun showcase of Guinevere, even though she is going to 
speed tie this leg yarn, and also tank a Corrin in the same turn, I think she can handle it. We are going to take advantage of the safety fence for this first turn. Very well. And Yay. just take the time to yes, move back a little bit and into position. Nope. Nothing happens. We're also going to need to make sure that like we this. buff Mila's res far Are enough that Guinevere doesn't end up tanking that debuff from Dorothea here. So, we're going this. to let Guinevere reposition Ulu to the left, it will be then done. have Mila do the same thing. Maybe Dance Guinevere forward way. one tile, Very well. and I'll move Selkis in to protect her in case I've somehow miscalculated and Melee actually reaches us this turn. And from there, we'll just say go. The first thing that should happen, I think, is that Dorothea dances leg yarn, and then I think... Oh, here she comes. Oh, I guess we don't quite see a speed tie. I really thought leg yarn would match Gwyn's speed, but I must have missed something. Gwyn's still alright here. Even though Corrin can do some damage, it's just not quite enough to finish Guinevere off. And from here, Gwen should just be able to start healing herself back towards full health, even if that'll take a few combats and turns from there. Silk, even with her very impressive bulk, still isn't quite able to survive Gwen thanks to attack speed unity. And from here, I don't think anything else gets to reach us this turn. Are you certain? Before we do that. Holy shit, that was... Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was nearly a heartbreaking misclick. I didn't actually mean to make that attack at all. Thankfully, Gwyn had just enough defense to survive that counterattack, or we would have been very sad here. I bestow my but blessing. I guess since we've already started unintentionally styling here, we may as well continue it. Ready. I was planning to move Guinevere forward to face-check this bolt trap after moving Zelgis out of its range, but he shouldn't actually need to worry Must about taking damage this. from Martha or Burkut here. So, we're just going to play it this way instead. It's a real build trap for 50 damage. Very Fair well. enough. We'll just smite Zelgius over here, What's your plan? and let him swap Peony and keep Guinevere safe from Marth and Burkut. And then we'll say go, and hope that I haven't horribly miscalculated. Nope. Burkut moves in. Does zero damage, but I think he does get to survive here. Nope, we're not. We have a very large bonfire. And Marth, since Zalgius is actually too low on health to avoid that follow-up prevention, doesn't get to stop that. Of course she gets one shot at anyway, but still, it's fun to see. With all of her ridiculous nonsense over. Dorothea is never actually going to be able to do damage to Guinevere, so I don't have to worry too much about her being attacked, as long as we keep Uller here to enable her weapon. Like and this. in fact, we should be able to just bait her into attacking Mila instead, while Zelkius is going to help Air the glimmer of life. get towards this ether pot for next turn. And then we'll say go. Dorothea picks the fight that she'll actually survive, giving us another chance to reach the Aether Pot before the end of the match. Yes. As now, we're going to bring this week to a close. Although I guess we're going to disappoint ourselves with a second misclick in the same match. I'm really off my game in this one. That's okay. Very well. Guinevere is going to finish Dorothea off, 
and prevent ourselves from having any more heartbreak this week. A bit annoyed that I didn't get that last ether pot, but it's not like it matters in the last match of the week. This was a fun week overall, although that last match got a little bit questionable <laughs> at times. It was still good to let Guinevere and Zalgius team up again in AR. It's been a while since I got to let them handle most of a week. And we did get to experiment a bit with a legendary Hector-enabled Gale Force strategy, which was a lot of fun. I'll probably try it out again next week and see if I can find any matches to put it to work again. But I am actually hoping to focus on Kranya instead, since it is a Bolt Tower bonus week, and it's been a long while since I put her in the spotlight. I do have a Discord channel, there's a link in the description if you'd like to hang out and chat, and I've also got a Patreon page there if you'd like to help support the channel. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, good luck with your own matches, and I'll see you next time.